The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Monday, the 23rd of May, and we're looking at the Dow up 291 at 31,552. At about 1.32 o'clock on Friday, it looked like the end of the world. The bears were gloating, the, bear, the, the bulls were, the, the, the bears were gloating and the bulls were saying, oh my God, I'm just, I'm throwing up my hands, I can't take this anymore. And then all of a sudden there was this spectacular, I wonder if I've got it right here, spectacular turnaround. And uh, within moments, the Dow gave, uh, had given back 600 points and it rerouted 600 points. Look at this beautiful move. It's just, just after one o'clock and it just screamed to the upside. Now, what's really interesting, and of course, it was one of those moves that because of options expiration, you didn't really know if it was going to, to, to catch on fire because I, you just never know with options expiration now whether or not you're going to get that full-blown spiral to the upside. But the later that it starts, the greater the chance. And that's exactly what happened. Because of the later you started, the greater the chance of moving higher. Now what we're looking at is with a move that goes from <clears throat> up 600 points and then up another couple of hundred points in the Dow. Let me just go to this particular chart here. Uh, what we're looking at is 30,635 is a low on Friday, a new a new unrecovery low. And then what happens, a turnaround, and then today's high is 31,688. That's a thousand points in, in hours. Uh, what about hours? It was, well, you have to include overnight. So that's a whole evening. But really, a market hours, it's just a couple of hours. And what we're looking at is, a pullback now to two, up 247. Now, one of the things that I said to subscribers to my opening call is, look, you got this left side and right side um, vertical test where the MACD was very weak and the stochastic was very weak on the 20th of May. Then it ran up to the 14 period moving average, black line right there, and then it came back down. And yet the technicals were way better on Friday, even with that terrible uh, smash to the downside. And that says to me that if you put it together with the, uh, the uh, let's go to the DOG, that is one to one short, you've gone to a leg D at 36, uh, 36.65 on the DOG, it's one to one short to diamonds. And there's a chance that it pulls back right here. It's only a leg C in the weekly chart, but in the daily, it's a, it's a peak D. If there's no new high above 36.65 uh, today, if you look at the SH, which is, I, I think I did this on Friday, which is one to one short the SPY, that went to a GSAS scene we've seen so many times, especially when uh, you've had a really powerful move above the 200 period exponential moving average, that you can continue higher with a GSAS C going to a D, and then you've got to be careful. Well, lo and behold, we've got that leg D. I don't know if it's a peak D, but it's 16. Point 54, the high of Friday, we're trading at 16.09 right now. And that's just saying the signs are there that at least the daily should be able to at least have a more prolonged up move rather than just these brief two, three day rallies and then a failure with a lower low. That's what I'm suggesting. And um, now let's just run these quickly. You've got S&P. We'll just do this. Here we go. S&P stalled at this um, up channel, sorry, down channel resistance line. That is the inside track, the first repellent zone. And then you get to the one that says you've got a breakout. And that says if you can go above the uh, 14 period moving average of 4,013 in the S&P, and right now you're at 39.18. So that's a that's a huge move to the upside. Um, after what we've just seen. That would be very positive. The MACD is slowly improving. Look, the histogram is at uh, 0.6, uh, minus 6, that is. 
And there's a chance now that you can start to see some kind of improvement. Day is young. Week is young. We'll see what happens. But the, you did get a V-shaped pattern in the unbalanced volume. Stochastic's better at 18%, still very, very weak. I don't have to talk about the weekly or monthly because the daily is really the key at this particular point. QQQ pulled back um, 95 cents at 287.70. You do want to see that the QQQ, NDX 100 trading vehicle, Invesco QQQ Trust Series, you want to see that it holds this uh, 288 level and manages by the end of the day to, admit, look, the high today is 292.01. I would like to see a close near the 291 high and by Tuesday, preferably going above that. That's what I would like to see. The market doesn't know that I'd like to see that. But if you look at the test on the left side, uh, around about the, uh, right here, around about the 12th of May with a low of 284, and then it rallies, fails between the 9 and 14 period moving average, comes back to a low, low at 280.21 on Friday. The technicals here are somewhat better. Okay, going to the IWM, this is a little bit different in that there is a, seems to be a greater weight to the upside being sustained, uh, the pressure that is to hold, it doesn't seem to be able to hold all that well, but if the IWM this week has a touch of uh, 182.85, that's one penny above the high that was made on the 17th at peak A. I would say that that's a really good general market sign because now you've got the uh, IWM rallying. You've got the uh, XLK. This is the XLK, which is the S&P Select Spider Tech Fund. Um, made a lower low at 127 with the technical slightly better. Uh, down, uh, so it's up 63 cents today, 131.68, down from the high of the day, 133.07. So this is another key. You want to see the tech sector at least moving a little bit to the upside now under these conditions. And if you're looking at the SMHs, the semiconductors, semiconductors are down $1.21 at 226.96. That's not a great sign. But actually what we're looking at is a rotation going on here, saying that there are some select areas that are really working well. And uh, are they able to kind of broaden, start to see other areas take effect uh, to the upside? All right. Question I had was um, SWN. SWN is uh, Southwestern Energy, natural gas, natural gas liquids. Oh, I never finished the notations here. Uh, maybe I did, but maybe it got taken out, so I'll just do it now. So you've got a D right there, and then you've got A, B, C, D. Yeah, so this is at, at two buy modes, going to a D, pulls back. Um, Southwest Energy, SWN is a symbol, up 25 cents at 734. Now look at this. You've got a trend line. And it's just been taken out. Yes, so I, you remember it made a leg C and then a peak C in the weekly chart. I think it's on its way to attempt. If it's able at 7.34, I know you're, you're, I'll leave you along. I would hold this, and if it's able, it's A, B, it's leg C. If it's able to break this week, if it closes just one penny above the 7.97 high of 4th of May, that's going to suggest it's going to go to a leg D in the, in the weekly chart. of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I've got a question here about P-O-L-Y, which is Blanchonics, uh, P-O-L-Y. So this is, I always have trouble with these stocks. This is something that must have been a, either a takeover bid or something like that. I'm not sure why, um, other than that's normally what I see. I have another stock that I've been following for ages and I keep going back to it because I keep forgetting it also had some kind of a takeover thing. And what happens is that there's a ga huge gap up. This goes from 26 up to the 38, 39 area and it just goes sideways. So all I can say is I, this is different to Twitter in that that was, that was a completely different thing. This has got the most incredible gap uh, island reversal when it spiked up to 54.57 on the 5th of April and then gapped down. That's because there was just only one bid and the bid was there because it was a, a buy regardless of what happens next uh, uh, offer. And that's what happened. Now it's down at 36. I mean, 54 to 36. That's a huge decline. But this is different. So let me just go back. And all I can say is um, let me just see in the den maybe. Uh, let me Zakuta. If you're able to tell me anything other than you've looked at it, it's, I don't touch stocks like this because if there is an offer, there's Plantronics, audio communications products, uh, 39.52 down 25 cents. If there is an offer, it, it depends on how it's structured. And then sometimes you get an initial offer and then you know, wow, there are other people in the field that want this as well. They're going to offer and make higher bids. Then you want it because well, it's best to get an option, a call option. In this particular case, all I can say is that I don't see anything other than there was a bid for something uh, like a Plantronics, P-O-L-Y, and it's just stuck in this range. It's not, not really, you could do a great trade if you want to do real quick intraday trades, pulls back to about 38. You can say, okay, it's in a rectangle formation, could bounce back to 40 and just get in and out and out. I would do, I'd do nothing. I, I just, all I can say is I don't see anything there other than there must have been a bid at some particular point and now uh, it's stuck in this range. So that's, that's, that's that one. Uh, XOM, question about XOM. XOM. Exxon Mobil, 
uh, trading up again at 94, up 2.14, just a fabulous move. So that's an alternate count. Now it's gone to leg D, and it kind of fits in with many of the others. Let's see with CVX is trading. Yeah, beautiful move up. Uh, All-time high is higher, but look, uh, you've got CVX holding very well within this rectangle formation. I forgot to put this in. This is, in fact, an F right here in the weekly chart but once you're in the energy sector <laughs> there are bids coming on all the time because it is just uh, there's no question that when crude oil is holding above 100 and right now it's at 109.81 well above 100 buying pressure is there in all these different areas um, so just stumbled on it by accident they have software and hardware for business to communications kind of like Cisco uh, IP based phones and software. Yes, uh, Zakuda, all I can say is when you have a stock that's stuck like that, there's an offer somewhere and it's very difficult to do, get out of the way unless there are multiple offers. And that's, I would do a little research. Maybe you can find that there's some multiple offers and then put in some kind of a bid, like a, like a call option or something uh, for a chance of another three to five point gain. But I, that's the only way I would do it. Right, and the other thing that I want to do ask, uh, I was asked about is, where do we go? Where do we go? Here we go. Okay, so this is what you want to look at within the context of um, the TLT. Uh, a question came in: Is the TLT a buy? Well, I would say it's a buy on a very short-term basis, but no, it's not a buy because I think that yields, at least for the moment, are either going to be in a narrow range. That's number one, or it's going to be even more intriguing because there will be some amelioration of the uh, yields as the T and X. I did this for my subscribers on uh, Saturday. I showed that the T and X had pulled back. Uh, maybe I'll just go there right now. Let's go to this. This is my uh, triple. Where did it go? There it is. This is my triple yield chart on the weekly chart with the TYX, the 30 year yield, white. The brown is TNX, and the as a ten-year and the five-year is the cyan colored. And you can see we've made a peak E at 32.77. That's 3.277 yield on the 30-year, and you're starting to pull back. And that just says to me, you know what? Yields as a trade can can have the TLT move higher. I don't know how much higher, but they can move higher. Most importantly, what we're looking at is it's really important right at this particular point to see the um, yields at least stay stable or come down, number one. Number two is you want to see crude oil start this week to pull back a little bit, and you want to see the grains if it's possible. So we'll go to the DBA, which is the DB agriculture. Oops, don't do that. What did I just hit? Oh. No, <laughs> let's just go back to SPX. That's the one we were looking at. Okay, and now what you want to see is that the um, the agricultural sector at least starts to pull back a little bit, and they can give this market a little bit of a chance to uh, have at least a decent rally. You're looking at wood, the iShares, still within the rectangle formation, hasn't broken down. Uh, crude oil, um, sorry, high-grade copper goes together, that's King Copper together with Timber and Forestry ETF, Global Timber and Forestry ETF, still holding well. Under all these conditions, I would have thought, wow, would iShares would have slumped down to the 75 area, and here it is at 86. This is really good action. And you can see the HDX, the Philadelphia Housing Index, is pulling back, but nothing dramatic just yet. So I, I need to get out of this. I wanted to show you something else. Let's close this workspace, save, and you're away. Good. Now look at this, high-grade copper. Oh, let me just say that this is a peak F in the um, yield. This is the 10-year TNX. It's a pull pullback. It hasn't gone to a sell signal yet. It's very close. I have to wait for the end of the day. I think it will be, but not a sell mode. And the weekly chart has made a peak E. It doesn't mean to say that it has to pull back sharply, but it is an E above the previous highs. And it looks like it really wants to pull back to the, it's at 28.15, down to the 26.30, maybe 25.92 level, uh, where the 14 period exponential moving average is. And that will be 2.592. And it's a leg C in the 10-year Treasury note monthly chart. 
Okay, now let's go to what we want to look at was the IYT. IYT is the transportation index. Trying to make a little bit of a bounce here from that. Was that a 218 low? I think it was. I don't know if I've updated that. 218. 216.06. I thought I better change. Oh, it is 216. I read misread it. 216.06. If the if the Dow Jones Transportation Index is able to at least rally towards this big ugly red candle of I think maybe it was Wednesday. That was the 18th with a high of 245 and a low of 224. Whew. Even if it gets back into the 227 area from the 223 right now, that'll be a sign to say, ah, something's happening then. Jets, which is the, uh, this is the U.S. Jets, which is the U.S. Global Jets ETF, um, is, down, is up 16 cents at 1941. It's off the low, but kind of off the recent high. we got to watch this closely. If it gets to 20.80 this week, that's going to be a good sign. That's our 420 S&Ps of 34. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, as I say, Jets needs to move high. So, let me just go through the thinking again. So, uh, I guess, uh, uh, um, uh, TG, thanks for the information. Seven weeks of the S&P just plunging to the downside. I, I shouldn't say plunging. It really was just a persistent lower lows and lower highs. So the reason why I'm beginning to think after all the work that I did over the weekend and what I showed my subscribers to my opening call, and one of the reasons why we are looking at the long side of both the, the, the Dow and the, and the QQQs um, and the other in, indices, but we, we've got very select positions. One of the reasons is, Within the context of these lower lows, look, this weekly chart just went beautifully into this Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. Not a great ca candle at all for last week. 
So this could be an inside week and then fail. But you've got all these signs that say, look, rising technicals with lower price. That's a divergence that could be termed a positive. It's not a positive if you don't get a commensurate rally with the move up. And then in this particular instance with the Dow, you get the MACD finally crossing positive. It hasn't more than this little, I call it the deflection lower back around about the 2nd of May. Um, oh, was that the 2nd? No, that was the rally to the April uh, April the 21st high at 35,492. Look how we deflected lower. Now what we're looking at is the chance of the night that the MACD, the nine period differential, that's the green line, faster moving average can go above the 26 period moving average exponential moving average and see the histogram the little vertical lines cross positive if it holds positive and doesn't just deflect for one bar or two bars and then go back down again this could be a more sustained move it mean i don't mean just a more sustained move over two three days I'm talking about a move that actually lasts a couple of weeks and then we have to just reassess because my suspicion is that if we if we have a very select rally and let's go to the XLF because you really need the the financials to be moving higher they're up to 89 up 90 cents at 33.82 on the XLF that's a good sign made a lower low on Friday so it's up uh, from the low of 32.23 to 33.82, that's very nice. And you've got this huge uh, support level that that broke under it and is now closing above it in the arch formation. So none of this is fantastic, but it does say at least there's a start where you start where you're beginning to see a flattening of the technicals. And yeah, the MACD did turn up stochastics very nice and uh, very weak at 23%, but very nicely off the low. On balance volume is still lagging tremendously. So I'm looking at sector by sector by sector. And if I look at it in that particular way, <clears throat> then I say, you know what? We've had a rotation to the downside. We finally got those Microsofts and the stocks that held so well, starting to really take a, take a, a beating 349, the high of Microsoft back in November, peak D, comes down to a low of 246. 6.44, I mean, 246.44, that's 100 points, that's a 30, almost a 30% decline. And that's that G slash C that becomes a D, just as we saw the opposite side of the SH. Uh, I like, that's a pattern I love. And now what we're looking at is within the context of, <clears throat> within the context of, uh, I can't even do the Fibonacci anymore because that's already taken out the low, so I'll just cancel that for now. Within the context of, the one to one to the downside, uh, we're kind of almost there in the weekly chart. And that just says a single leg A down with a fractional, a fractional lower, a fractional higher low. And then you go to a B. That invariably says be, be aware that you could have a very sharp single leg to the upside. And then maybe you make that A to B equals C to D, the lightning bolt pattern. But in the meantime, we are seeing enough areas that are rallying to say the downside, those maybe one or two little slumps, but I don't think now we're going to get more than a two to 300 point slump. I think we might be extremely um, oversold on a purely technical level. That's what I'm saying. And as a result, you don't really want to, uh, um, let me explain it this way. Look at these moves to the downside. Here's the Dow. Look how many, yes, if you were able to get the short and just hold the short tight, that's fantastic. That's the way you want it. But look at these strong moves to the upside. I mean, you, you're patting yourself on the back. You take your hands off the wheel, pat yourself on the back. That's when you hit the tree. And that's what would have happened on all these short sides. But at the same time, short was the place to be because it made lower lows and lower highs. Now I think on a shorter term basis, we're going to see whether there's a chance to do it the other way around. If you look at the VIX index, the VIX index is at 29.55. It's actually up 11 cents at 29.54. Uh, uh, at when the S&Ps are 46 and the Dow's of 455. Now, first of all, it's really unusual <clears throat> to get 
the Dow much stronger than the S&P. Usually the S&P is just a slightly, a slightly different 500, S&P 500 very often has a slightly bigger move on a percentage basis up or down than the Dow. But lately the Dow has been in its own trajectory and done very well. That's why we always like the Dow. We use the Dow as a trading vehicle. Now, there's another thing that I wanted to discuss, and that was, could I look at platinum? I didn't have a chance to do that. Oh, how did that come about? Let's do this. Let's see where, where this takes me, where this mistake takes me. Platinum. Platinum is trading up 13 at 954.40. And what I wanted to say is, I had a question, but it came in a little late on Friday. I didn't get to it. Is that platinum's holding well in the lower range? It's uh, the platinum continuous contract at 954.60. Uh, um, I suggest that it's parameters I have to look at because it's right in the middle of, of a range, so it could go anywhere. But if it manages to get to 1,000, this at 954, any time this week, that's going to suggest that platinum is in uh, moving very well to the upside. If it pulls back, it doesn't have to have to go to the 910 uh, level. But if it goes under 920, it says, you know what, just stuck in range. My impression right now, platinum is stuck in a range. So I, that's what I'm going to say. That's my summation. Plat, uh, palladium, P-A-L-L, -L, is that right? Aberdeen Palladium, yeah. Palladium is in the lower range. It's just stuck as well. It's not going anywhere. If you're looking at, um, what was I looking at? The other? Oh, lithium, L-I-T, lithium. Nice move up, peak A, peak B. It's in leg C to the upside, but it's way off the highs. Global X, lithium and battery tech fund. Yeah, I like this. I, I like it, um, but it's now a little bit extended. It's gapped up and it's extended at 72.23. Probably if it's a leg C, I, I'd, I'd, I'd probably want it under 70.20 to 69.80, not, not lower than that. And then I would say, let's see if we can get to 74, 73.80. Because if it gets to 73.80, then the 200 period moving average comes back in as a magnet to the 74.94 level. If it pulls back deeper than 60, under 68, that's not a good sign. Okay, let's look at that. That's that. That's that. That's that. I wanted to. Uh, oh, a uh, question came in. Radio. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. No. <laughs> Sorry. That was. I don't know why. That was a very. That was quite a while, while, while back. A question. Um, oh, that's right. So the question came in on a Friday. A VFC. VFC. What about VFC? Well, VFC, isn't this the clothing corporation, VFC Core, is trading at 48.699? I, what I, I was going to say on Friday is that this is the start of an attempt to move higher, but I don't think it's in the right area. So I just, I, if I'm correct, I'll do the doing the break, check out VFC Core. I think it's in the uh, retail clothing sector. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it could seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Peter White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm going to go through these and K and Nike. Nike is now on a dollar at 106.93. So this guy, your VF4 is a retail apparel, etc., and, and shoes. And the chart really doesn't look good. Nike's in the same category. So I think that that's an area that is under pressure still. But I can tell you something, that there's H pattern right now with a slightly lower low, 105 round number low a week and a half ago. And now we've got a low from Friday of 100 and 507. So if that's not taken out, and somehow by the end of the day, Nike is up one instead of being down one, it says you could have a, a nice counter trend bounce. That's all I would call it is a counter trend bounce. So that's Nike. Uh, let me just run these. Rio was mentioned in the den. Rio is Rio Tinto. Rio is doing nicely. Peak A, peak B is in leg B right now. It made a peak D in the weekly chart. I, I like this um, as a not only as a trade right now, but as a position play in the sense that Rio Tinto, there you are, uh, you've got yourself at least a decent cup formation and says at 71.01, 7107 uh, right now, 72.70 is the 200 period moving average and is only in leg B. And that would say to me that if it's able to hold, this is Rio Tinto, RIO, up um, $1.53 at 7108. If it's able to get to 71.53, then there's a real good chance that the 200 period moving average will be tested. Um, the weekly chart says you've got almost a much bigger than a one to one to the downside, and that makes the 72.57 there as well. That's a, uh, the 14 period moving average as resistance. You've got me. So I'm just going to suggest that I like it, but I also think that it's going to hold support, but it's going to chop around even if it gets to 72 to the 200 period moving average. I think it's going to chop around, go a little above and a little below, and it might hang around you for a week. If it's able, Rio Tinto is able to get to 74.80 or 75.20, anywhere in that range this week, that's really good action. Uh, Vail is another one that was uh, I was asked about. Well, why does it not? When I hit Vail, V-A-L-E, why is it not there? There it is. Uh, alternate rate count, yeah. So this is the same thing. This is a leg A. This is actually a little bit more extended. It's a leg A, leg B, PP, and now it's a leg C. And it's gone above the 200 period moving average. And that just says at 1731, VALE, uh, this is iron ore pellets, nickel, copper, ferro oils, etc., is up 60 cents at 17.32. This is participating in this particular move in the market right now. But the weekly chart says almost the same thing as Rio, that a bigger move up is going to need in the short term a much bigger push above the 200 period moving average of 18, oh sorry, of 1691. So if this is in leg C, I, I want to let peak C here, I want at least a leg C to extend, and it needs to extend above the high that was made um, April the 29th, 
1776. Oops, 1776. Good number. If it gets to 1776 in this move, leg C, that's going to be very good. But the weekly and monthly charts are saying, you know, there's a lot, lot, lot more to be done. Looking at um, EEM. Can't remember who asked me about the EEM. Yeah, this is stalling. This is trying to rally. It's kind of struggling. This is the emerging emerging markets ETF at 41.40 up 26 cents. I, I think this one's going to have a tougher time. But E uh, E I think it's EWZ. I think that's the Brazil one. Yes, EWZ Brazil ETF. This is a this is the leg C you wanted, right here. Look. This is look at that big gap up and extension from the low that was made at 30 at 29 actually 29.90 on the 10th and here we are one two three four five seven eight nine ten eleven days later and we're at 34.68 that's a fabulous percentage gain but here as well the weekly chart says a lot more needs to be done but it is a nice turnaround you've got yourself a beautiful cup formation it's a little deep for a cup but it's a cup formation it ain't it ain't the deep dish pizza but it is a nice cup formation and that says you could draw in the left side right side yeah this says that there's a chance that if uh, on the 22nd of april the high was 3605 um this i would give this until wednesday afternoon to thursday if it can get to 3550 that's going to be really good and to suggest it's going to try to tackle the high of this bar of the 22nd and the key support has got a lot of support 34 um, round number 34 support most importantly 33.28 is the 200 period moving average the further it goes up from the 200 period moving average the further you can think of it as a propellant rather than a magnet uh, where would you add on the EWZ I would add that's a tough one because they're already in leg C I would prefer if C continues higher so you're going to miss your add-on. So, oh, I would split it. I'd add on right now 34.72, part of the position you wanted to add, and then I would add either 34.20 or 33.95. Okay, then I make it two positions that you add instead of one. You're just going to divide it in, into two parts. I don't care, I don't care how you, you want to uh, do it which is greater or lesser or just 50%, but that's what I would do. And one of the reasons is that within the context of Brazil, the way that it's held so well with higher highs and higher lows in the monthly chart says that at worst it could be stuck in a range, but at best it could show some leadership. And that's kind of what we're looking at here, that within, uh, within the context of the rotation through the different sectors, Brazil seems to be, have the, the goods. I mean, they've got the raw materials, and I think that's favoring it. So, yeah, right here, and then add a little lower down, split it up. Now, one of the reasons for subscribers, I said, to split our entry point into the Dow was we were long Friday, but I was definitely not going to have a 10-point something stop. We got stopped out. We actually made a little money, can you believe it or not? And then it plunged, and then it came roaring back. So... I like what I'm seeing based on, I go through once again, for those of you who are late, the DOG making a potential peak D. Yeah, that's one-to-one -one short the Dow, one-to-one uh, -one short the S&P is a peak D at this particular point. The VIX index is starting to pull back. The VIX index now is, I think it's down. It was a little bit up. Now it's down three cents at 29.40. But that's not good enough. I want to see it break this key support and little miniature Japan wave inside track support level. I want to see it by Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday, right through Fed, whatever they say. I want to see it under 25.50. If you can see the VIX finally under 25.50, that says we've got a much better chance of rallies that are sustained. We've just got into the habit of them failing. Uh, that's the next thing. I did that, did that, did that, did that. Um, oh, question came in. Could you look at um, uh, v VMware is one of your old ones. This is one of the old ones that you had huge gains way back. Uh, we haven't had it in ages. And look at this takeover talk up 19 at 114.72. It went all the way down to 95. It's one that I said it's on my list together with Akamai. Akamai Technologies, but we haven't got anything yet. They failed. They held beautifully up until late April, and then whoosh, 
they came down. Oh, wish they came down. This is like this, the break that just came up. That was a 460 S&Ps at 43 Basel Chapter Target Additions Hour. Slightly bullish here. Not, not overly bullish, slightly bullish. I think that uh, there's a chance that uh, this rally can actually hold, even though they could be pulled back later today. We'll see. I'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, I'm Alvin Chapman, Tiger's Edition. Sound Dazzle 462 is up 39. Now, a couple of questions came in GDX. So, you see, GDX is already in leg C. Um, it hit key support level and the 29 area. It's a 32. That's something, three points. You can't complain about that. But when you look at that weekly chart, unless there's going to be some kind of a trigger for gold independent of the, of the dollar, look, the dollar at this particular point is definitely pulling back sharply from the 105 level. Uh, this is a new multi-year recovery high, 105.01. Is down 84 ticks at 102.18. If you look at the EUR USD, it's a very nice move up. You see, this is the kind of move that on the euro dollar currency pair, that's a way better move than the GDX, the gold miners. Look how it struggles, only got to a C. So something tells me that gold. I, we were going to go. I was going to go along a gold stock today, and I decided, you know, something's not quite right there. It doesn't mean to say it should pull back or break down, but it just means that maybe it doesn't rally as sharp as it, it needs to. 34.27 is the 200-period uh, moving average. It's just failed at that level every time. Um, we'll see what happens. Uh, looking at silver, same thing. Silver 
is uh, up 16 cents at 21.84. It's a leg B. It's really been struggling. It's gone to the lower end of the rectangle formation. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Most importantly, what I wanted to say is let's follow the VIX index. If the VIX index trading right now at 29.59, it's still up 10 cents, uh, 16 cents. If by the end of the day, just it gets wear, worn down, and that the, the fund managers who keep buying this as, as insurance just aren't there and it starts to break uh, under 29 and then all of a sudden 28 and actually by tomorrow takes out the low of yesterday of Friday of 28.06. I would suggest to you that the, the buying pressure in the market very selectively is going to hold. And with that said, I'm going to hand you over to Larry Pizzavento. Should be a wonderful show as always. We've got Larry Pizzavento. We've got uh, Think or Swim. You've got Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and you've got Tom O'Brien. And check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Hope to see you tomorrow. Have a great day.